Hello, Shona. I'm happy to have you on the podcast. How are you today? I am terrific, as usual. Um, very good. Well, everybody, we are on the channel today with Shana Shu. We're going to learn more about you and your work, uh, Shana. So maybe just to begin, just give us a bit of a background to you and your work, and then we can dive right in. I love that. Well, I'm one of those people who um, maybe everyone that's in this community is like this because we're seekers. So when you're young and you're you're seeking, um, and maybe not, but my mother filled my head with with interesting ideas. The prophet when I was young, right? It was like I was reading amazing poetry when I was young, and I I got wanderlust, and I wanted to learn all I could learn, and so I did. And I I uh, my mother tried to help me. I was a redhead, white pasty skin braces, glasses, freckles, you know, and a little dab of baby fat. So mom put me in classes and uh, I learned and I've been a lifelong learner since. So I think that wow, kind of gives you an cool. essence of who I am. Well, we'd like to know more about what you do exactly other than just learn randomly. Um, but um, Well, but we're... NLP, we talked about neuro-linguistic programming. And yes, so tell me more about what you're doing in that space. Tell me about what you're doing in the application of those protocols. Tell me how that's applied in your practice. Well, I want to preface it also by saying that I learned about neuro-linguistic programming young, but didn't catch it and didn't understand it. And even when I read a book about it, and what I understand now, at least from my perspective, is how experiential it is. That it's so evolving. It's like even when you use some of the tools with neuro-linguistic programming, when you're actually working with somebody's mind, how fluid it is. So um, I ultimately went and got my practitioner's certificates in neuro-linguistic programming, and I loved it. And I started to incorporate it into my coaching. And so, and it was really, I was having active results, working with leaders predominantly, business people. And then I decided that I would go and acquire my master's certificates in neuro-linguistic programming. And I remember the very first intense weekend that I went and my instructor was teaching us something and, and I stopped and I went, I need to call on my clients and apologize. <laughs> because I was so, I was learning so much more then, you know, I was learning this and, you know, she stopped me and said, you were giving them what you knew then, which was right at that time. And I so think what, what, that- what were you Do you remember what it was? I'm just so curious. I know, it was, I, I can't remember if it was just the difference between, you know, struggle or just certain concepts and that I was like, I had this much knowledge and I was helping people with that much knowledge. You know, what is it that they know nothing and you know this much and so you know, you're, you're moving them along as you go. And now I actually have so much, much bigger body of work. So I combine it with neuro-linguistic programming, which is NLP is brilliant things, but also everything else from all of the education that we do when we're learning about anything from being present, Eckhart Tolle, to Abraham Hicks. I don't know if you know anything about Abraham Hicks, but just being open to what the universe will provide. So mm -hmm. I dig what I do. And I work with business professionals, almost all leaders or owners. Wow, that is so interesting. I'm, I'm so interested to know about what you actually do. Um, the people that are listening are interested in uh, so many faculties of what you're doing. But we're speaking to a community of neuroplasticians, Shana. So tell us how neuroplasticity shows up or is applied in your work um, with leaders and business owners. Thank you. And interestingly enough, and I think this is not for this group, but in general, I start with a couple of processes inside my coaching that mm -hmm. everybody will understand. Number one, they must call me. And of course, that's to break whatever pattern they're in. And my clients, I'm like, you call on the hour, right? I mean, I'm, I'm very implicit about this. And so it breaks the pattern of whatever they're in. If I call them, I'm interrupting them, which is fine. But when they call me, 
They have to break their train of thought. They must find the number or dial me up. It puts them in a space for wanting, seeking. Then the next thing I do is I lead them through a guided meditation right off the bat. And one of the reasons I do this, and I was in some of your other communities and how that changes all of our physiology. It's, it, it, I just have them shut their eyes. And by the way, I don't do anything on Zoom. A, a conscious decision I made was to just use the telephone for the listening aspect of it and for me to actually connect with them in a universal loop. So this morning, I just had a coaching session before we got on the phone and I was leading this woman through the guided meditation. And I can't really remember what I mentioned, something about her mind or opening her heart. And later in the call, she went, I can't believe you said that in the guided meditation. It's exactly what I'm going through. And I can't tell you how often that happens. So everyone in here will realize I'm just connecting to who they are. Only I'm doing it through the phone. Oh, wow. So thanks for humoring me on Zoom to do this. <laughs> to have to have some uh, visual time. But you know, I, I used to work on the phone on Skype. Remember Skype? And, um, and I was always fearful that people were checking their email or doodling on their paper or just getting distracted because of the visual cortex is just so robust. So what do you do to break the pattern of them getting distracted or don't you need I, to? I don't actually, I feel, and it might just be, it's of course my perception only. <laughs> we can only come from ourselves. But when I'm on Zoom, and like even right now, those that are watching on Zoom, if they're watching, because sometimes they're just listening, which is okay right, too, right? right? It's but they're going to look at my crazy stuff in the back and that I have a gold wall and that I have, that's a young woman waiting for a cow to come in and what that means to me. Or your mind is going somewhere visually versus what's happening inside us. So, and I get distracted on Zoom personally. But when maybe, I am maybe acting- we should, Maybe we should turn off our cameras and just go audio for the rest of the session. No, it, no, because those that like visual will be able to do that. And those that don't want to have a choice. Mm. But when I'm doing my work, and I will explain this on one thing that I had an assignment. I was, I get coached as well, right? We all are doing these things to make ourselves better. And I had an assignment um, between one coaching and another. We were live and they said, get in touch with at least three to six of your clients and ask them what value, what benefit you provide. And I didn't do the assignment. <laughs> so I got there that morning and one of the other coaches reminded me that this was an assignment. And she said, all you need to do is text them. So I had, I had not sent an email. I didn't really have my questions, but I just texted six of my clients that normally when you email someone, they get back to you or they don't get back to you. But I texted them and I said, I have an assignment. Would you please tell me what value you've gotten from my coaching? sent it off that morning within half an hour i had 100 percent replies all six got back to me on text so that was a lesson right there yes that if i'd sent them an email they might have put it aside or they may have but they texted right back and some of the things they said solidified my process uh one said you hear things i don't say and i was like talk more about that i didn't but later could where if i'm tied to if i have them in my ears and i'm in their ears and they can take notes if they want to type and they sometimes they will tell me afterwards they've taken four pages of notes i am typing while i'm listening and i'm doing nothing else and i find that i'm never fearful of them not being engaged because really they're doing all the talking my job as a coach is just to ask deeper and better questions. And then of course, those questions help them uncover something themselves. The insights come from the question asked. 
the Miltonian language that I'm spotting as you speak is so engaging, my friend. And that is because you clearly have learned the art of Milton Erickson. And that is a good thing to behold. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, I really, I really love your, your language. It's definitely a skill that you learned in NLP land. Um, so, so that is definitely a kudos. So tell us about your protocol. What do you do? You start off with a meditation, get them grounded, and then jump into the linguistic protocols from NLP or what are you, what is your thing? Well, just now you said something lovely. And I find that what I will tell my clients is that I am their word watcher. So I'm going to hook if they, I believe what they're saying to me is uncovering their limiting beliefs. I see where the fear comes out based on the language that they're using. And really it's not what you say. It's the intent behind what you say. So one of the things that I will, my process may have them call me clear. We're right on the hour. Number two, Besides a little bit of where are you, I like to know where they are, because if I know where they are, there's a different energy to them. Sometimes they will go into the car to be totally alone. So it's kind of keying me that they need confidentiality that day. They're at home this day, so they're going to have a more comfortable cadence or energy to themselves. If they're in the office, there's a different energy. So I ask where they are. Then we go through the guided meditation and I ask them to give me a physical check-in. Now I do that for a couple of reasons. This is has become very key in my practice because if they say super tired today, then I'm going to filter their information to me through a tired lens. If they say they're very stressed or they're in pain, we look at the world differently based on our physicality. So I ask them to give me a physical check-in. And the next thing I do is I ask for a win. How I start every single session. Now, what I love is my clients will say something like, I knew you were going to ask me for a win. <laughs> I have some, I have some. The longer that I've worked with somebody, the more they'll go, oh, tons of wins. And what this is doing and probably a lot of people in this community do this as well. But when somebody comes to a coaching session, they have something they want accomplished or they're unhappy with something. That's why they're working. That's why they're investing in themselves. Uh, they already know what that is. Tell me what's working. And as they tell me what's working or a win, the nuance, the energy, where they're at, how they're thinking sort of presents itself to me which leads me into possibly a tool that they might use or to check their language about something. And we're off. We're in the session based on them describing what a win is. I love your approach, Shana. <clears throat> this is neuroplasticity 101. Get the right ion channels open in their brain. Get them looking rather than avoiding. Get them seeking rather than hiding. Start building the pathways rather than burning the bridges. So, um, so I love that what you what you're doing. This this work is is very interesting to me. Um, so, have you been trained as a coach as well, Shana? Well, yes and no. I've not gotten any certificate any certifications in coaching. But way back when it was all beginning, however long ago this was, years and years, um, I don't even want to say, <laughs> I hate myself so much, but I had mastermind groups. They were kind of just beginning. And Jack Boland had built this entire process of masterminding. So, of course, it's biblical. Whenever two or more gathered in my name, I am there among you. But he had built and created a framework for mastermind. And so I had a variety of masterminds I attempted. Many don't work. And the reason that they don't work is because they're, you need a leader or people are in it for selfish reasons instead of giving reasons, whatever. 
but I worked with several that were all going through coaching programs. Okay. So I was working with them as an apprentice and as a guinea pig. So I learned much of my coaching abilities and some of the processes from the people I mastermind with. And I still mastermind. And by the way, this might be interesting to everyone and something you could incorporate in your practices. When I started coaching years and years ago, I was hired to come and do a series a monthly presentation for 70 people down in California. I flew down. I live in Oregon. I flew down to California and I would do a half day and I had sponsors and I would work on business the second half of the day. And we called it create your ultimate year. And I was creating these programs and doing four hours and people were having life changes, but Things would wear off in the middle of this, you know, one month, every, we're all, you know, yay, I'm going to go do it. And by the next month, it had diminished. So I had been doing a lot of research on leaders and leaders are normally early risers. They get a lot done in the early morning before anyone else. I had been studying um, not only a variety of leaders, but I was intrigued by Mary Kay Ash, who created Mary Kay Cosmetics. And in her trajectory, she was working for a large corporation and they would ask her to train these younger men who all were promoted above her. And she went, this isn't right. So at, she got up at 5 a.m. and between five and seven worked on her business. She created Mary Kay Cosmetics in the two hours before her kids got up and she went to work. So I decided to offer this as an experiment of five AM group. It was actually get up at five, be on this, you know, a uh, group line at 515. And I called it the accountability call. On Mondays, you would tell me what you would be accountable for by Friday. There was a theme for the week. They have to call in at 515, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And on Friday, I would read off what they said that they would do. Now, these are all leaders. They're all people who want to get, get better. It's crazy when you say that in front of other people, how much you get done. So I started it in January, I think of 20, 20, 206, 17 years ago. And uh, I got up at four o'clock because I had to have the quote ready and I had to be ready and all that. So at the end of three months, because I said it's going to take us three months to get a habit formed, right? I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. It's so hard. I'm getting up. I have to work so hard. So I'm like, so what do you think? You know, ready to like pull the plug. And everybody went, you can't stop. This is brilliant. This is fabulous. So much has happened. You have to keep going. So JJ, I have done this accountability call for the last 17 years without a stop. Wow. So and you're you're an early riser. No, I'm not really, but people pay to be on it. It is a source of revenue for me. Mm -hmm. If they are coaching with me, they can be on it as part of my coaching uh, investment. But if they stop coaching with me, they can still pay to be on it. And I have people who still pay to be on it. So how, many, how big later. is the group? I'm just so curious. This is brilliant. It, it, it really is a great group. And it comes and goes. Right now, I think there's seven. I have a new woman starting in October. She'll be on it. She tried it out last month and loved it. Um, and the way to get on it is you must coach with me. And what's interesting mm -hmm. about it is we talk differently. Talking about NLP, Bandler, we talk differently. So I don't open it to the world because, matter of fact, the other day I said, I have, I foster puppies. And I said something like, I'm trying to, and like all of them went, boing, 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 boing. they were like, try, Shauna. <laughs> we don't use the word try in the morning call, right? We don't use the word try. So I I laughed and said, got me, right? Mm. So we're checking language. We're And guess what? On Wednesdays, we start with a win. It's called Win Wednesday. <laughs> I want to infuse their minds with looking for wins in their lives. I love this. It's brilliant. It really is brilliant. And yeah, okay. I do it every day. Okay. And I don't know. Here's the. Tell me what 
the question, what question should I ask you? Okay, option A. Should we try this in the NPN hub? Question Why B. not? I mean, and do it. The idea would be if you have enough people that are there watching this or would say, and you have the challenge with a community is how many time zones you're in. You and I are in different time zones. Now, I will tell you that I do this at 5 a.m., 5.15 a.m. Pacific time. But I have had people East Coast that were on it. And currently, one of my clients lives in Brazil. So she's four hours ahead of us. And I have Arizona and California, but mostly it's to use those hours before work to meditate, plan, exercise, write. So that's the reason for the 515. So within this community, it might be that you would have these groups that that are accountable to each other, a mastermind if, if it were. But what I've also found that is different from other masterminds that I have been involved with is I lead it. Now, these are all leaders. So when I travel for a week, I make it a wild card week and I let other people lead. And every time I get back, they're happy I'm, I'm back. I'm the thread because as you can tell, I'm high energy and I, I nip, we go right along. Now, I so will do, tell you, do, when, do you, do you do this every day? Every day, Monday through Friday. And here's the thing on Fridays, they have to, so on Fridays, I say, I call you, I go, okay, JJ, you're up. And you say, I'm present. That's how we start is we want to be present. Saying I'm present helps you be present. And I go, JJ, you said that you would follow up with X client and you get to say yes, no, or percentage, no story. If you begin a story, I will stop you and say, that's a yes, no, or a percentage. I don't, don't we, get it. You've got to do this. I don't know. Making you run another, there's a question about language. Let me just first get the language out the question. Yes. So mastermind is different to a group coaching session or a round table. What makes a mastermind a mastermind? Beautiful question. Beautiful question. Generally, it's a group of people coming together to believe for the other people more than they even believe for themselves. It's the when there's an energy inside a mastermind that you wouldn't have if you didn't get together. So even though I'm leading this, it is not a group coaching session. There might be drops of coaching in if somebody has a word, but generally there's no correction and no coaching. What it is, is I'll like this week, we're talking about achievement. That's the theme. So this morning, it was a wonderful quote. And it said, my mother told me that if I became if I went into the military, I would become a general. If I became a monk, I would become a pope. Instead, I became a painter and that became Picasso. So Picasso used, this is his quote and we're like, ah. so I'll put the quote out and then everybody jumps on to say, the mother is the one who set him up for success or he knew in himself that he would be great no matter what he did. And they're all adding in, which makes it the mastermind. Like we believe for each other that the reason you're on this call is for greatness. Does that make sense? I'm so enamored. Let me tell you the story why. So <laughs> okay. totally blown away. I told you, I'm actually having shivers. So here, here is the story. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to be beta testing the brain pod concept. Okay. Now the, the NPN hub has got big enough that there are opportunities and there's actually a need for people to have pods of kind of environment where they can have these deep conversations, where they can have a sense of uh, belonging into a micro community where they can have a sense of accountability where they can scrum down together and they can do the stuff 
that you've been speaking about. So the idea that I'm thinking is to think out how your work would be relevant to this concept that we are busy formulating because it sounds like you are a decade ahead of this in terms of what you've been doing. So Nearly two decades. <laughs> well, one potato, <laughs> potato, same thing. I'm not that old, really. No, you 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 don't. You got your younger heart, that's for sure. Um, but I mean, how does that sound, Shona? We, we we're going to get a group of seekers. We're going to get a group together. <laughs> we hopefully, we hopefully are seekers, and we're going to have a conversation with to say what are we going to do in these brain pods. So, I think it would be really nice to have your protocol on the table so we can say here is something that's clearly stood the test of time here is something that we can look at and we can augment into a process now it's never going to be every day there's nobody not even me i'm interested in being up at five every morning but do you think we could tweak it to be like a once a week event of course, there's so many times um, masterminds and getting together, it works. It's just what is the end goal or what is it? Like my thread is, is that these business people, they're investing in this, want to be the very best they can be. And they're willing to be vulnerable with each other. And it grows. I mean, I keep it clipping. And then... Like two weeks ago, we did risk. And I I just asked on the Tuesday, because we had a little time on Tuesdays, I said, share, if you will, your greatest risk. Mind blown, mind blown. But we wouldn't start there. These people have been together for a while. Some of them have been on for the whole 17 years. Other are, others are fairly new. And so, and by the way, you know the new ones because they don't have their language well. They're over talking or they they don't make their point well. Because as a leader, sometimes as a coach, I will be able to go, stop talking. <laughs> you know, you made your point, now stop. And they're like, I do that, don't I? Stop talking. Okay. <laughs> so where are we at and how do we how do we get concise? So within my group, because it's led by a coach. It's highly effective and we play by my rules. I'm not certain the other groups I've been involved with, some have been very effective because they're small and we really know each other well. Other groups I've been in, I, I didn't want to belong. I have gone to a couple of masterminds that were within an organization. Everybody was a coach. Everybody was really great, but I was bored immediately. I was like, we're spending an hour and a half doing this and you're asking questions at the beginning, like what's your biggest fear and you know, what keeps you up at night? Go on, move on. I, I find I'm bored quickly. So for your, for this community, I think you'd have to figure out what, what the end goal of and, and what people want in it. Because I, mine, I, my I calls are 15 minutes. These the masterminds calls. Mm -hmm. We're on and off in 15 minutes, Monday through Friday. We go from 5.15 to 5.30. Now, one thing I've incorporated that's been really effective, on Thursdays, this began just giving you ideas. Another coach friend of mine was writing a book on leadership, and he wanted accountability to get the book written. So I said to him, join the 5.15 call. And on Thursdays, he would tell a story or read from the book. So he had a chance to try out his concepts and have people give him feedback every Thursday until he finished the book. And then he's like you, JJ, he didn't want to get up at five o'clock anymore. <laughs> but it was brilliant. So then I went, I really like breaking up the week with something different on Thursdays. So now I look for a story 
a story that would t be in line with our theme for that week. And now I'm encouraging my clients to tell the story because good leaders are good storytellers. So I will help them in some of my coaching, like the one woman who was in my uh, coaching and in the 515 who lives in Brazil. She's actually doing a story we worked on in the 515 at a conference this week. So it gives them an opportunity to practice with people who love them and give them feedback. So Thursday, but guess what? It's still within that 15 minutes. How can you tell a story in 15 minutes and have nothing else on the table? Is it just her show then at, at that time? That's right. So I'll say tomorrow I have a woman telling a story. So I'll start same way I start every, you know, welcome, good morning, good morning, good morning. And let me introduce Diane, who will be telling a story. Take it away. She tells the story. And then at the end, I call everybody's name and they give her feedback. They tell her she was brilliant or they, what they loved about it. Or they go, what I thought you were going to say. And we're like, you know, the storyteller's taking down notes. And we're still off in 15 minutes because a 15 minute story is too long, just so you know, in the world. Yeah. So normally the stories are three minutes, five minutes tops. It works. I'm loving what you're saying. There is so much opportunity to unpack this expertise and make it useful in this community. Yes. No, but I think got, the community would have think, to tell you that, right? Well, wanted... you, 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 maybe, I don't know, I'm trying to think how to do this. Maybe we can think about this later, Sean, but there's so much here about looking at one's beliefs, limiting, intention, context, physical state, focusing on getting a win, focusing on accountability, focusing on what quotes or what reading or what themes are important there, there's so much here to unpack or at least to define a protocol that i have an idea for you. Yes. and by the way what's great about this podcast and thank you for having me on is that anybody listening to it could incorporate these things into their own practices exactly that's the the beauty here but one of the things that we did i started years ago which might be a way to start for inside the community is during the year, because I have 52 weeks, now we take one week off between Christmas and New Year's. We just, we usually will do Monday of that Christmas week, Monday, Tuesday, that's when Christmas is. But I'll take the whole week between Christmas and New Year's off and start the Monday after January, whatever. That's one we take off. We, of course, take off Thanksgiving, Thursday, Friday of Thanksgiving. And then different things uh, we'll take off. Generally, it runs for 50, 51 weeks all the way through. But during the year, I will take 13 of the weeks and I will do Benjamin Franklin's 13 virtues. Now, I don't know if you know anything about Benjamin Franklin's 13 virtues or traits. Do you I'm, know? I'm, I'm watching the time and um, Benjamin I don't even Franklin... know what time it is because I do have a coaching call right after us. But let me... Let okay. me just give don't you don't tell me about Benjamin Franklin uh, Franklin now, because this is great stuff we can use in the roundtable. So I'm thinking what we should do is have time with you to unpack this so that we can wrestle with it and we can see how your expertise can support, build, feed. I think word is feed, nourish the idea of the brain pod protocol so i think there's so much here to unpack sean i i'm i need to i need to stop you because otherwise i'll never let you go so okay. no, <laughs> well, as long as people got what they some ideas that's what we're here for my goal is well, to we're gonna do we're gonna do something fun together I, I can see it and what we're gonna do is set up a conversation and see what we can do within the community so thank you so much for sharing your expertise Shana, we're going to do something great in building the culture around the neuroplastician community. So, wow. Is there anything else, like final points you want to make or can we leave it hanging? 
for the next steps in a round table. We can leave it hanging, but I will say one last thing. I live on 20 acres in the middle of nowhere with animals. I foster dogs and I think that that has impacted a lot of, I think we learn a lot from other species. So I just think that's an interesting thing also for people to think about inside their practices. There is a whole lot of work around equine therapy and the role of and intuition. Anyway, we're not going down that road. Speak to Liz no, just... Cuthridge. That's her area of thing. And we'll do that. But once again, Chana, what a treat to meet. Thank you so much for the energy and the wisdom. And we're going to, we're going to do something with this. I can feel it in me waters. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Chana. Take care. Bye-bye.